Good evening and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics I'm going to be showing a video uh, doing a game unboxing of Avalon Hills Luftwaffe 1943 to 1945 bookcase game. So um, this is my second video in a in a series of uh, videos featuring the board games that I had played back in the early 1980s. And um, although the game I played the most was uh, Avalon Hills B17 Queen of the uh, Queen of the Skies, uh, Luftwaffe was certainly the the second most common game that I played. Uh, I usually played this with uh, with friends, but there were times that I played uh, that I played this game solo. And so it is certainly um, it is certainly something that you can play solo. And uh, it just requires that you're you're fair to both sides as you're playing. It's kind of like playing yourself at chess and not cheating either way, you know, making stupid moves uh, intentionally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a genuine box opening here. Um, all I've all I've done was just broken through the the top portion, and uh, I picked this up on eBay. The game itself was a little under ten dollars, and then the shipping was about eight dollars, and tax was like a dollar eighty or something. So in all, uh, I think nineteen dollars and sixty-seven cents for the uh, for the game, which is you know really quite affordable for something that's you know a pretty old game. I believe the the game itself was printed in nineteen seventy-one, or that's that's when it was first released. So let me show you the box. Let's switch to the big screen here. So here we have the the box. I'll hold it up this way. And uh, they're called bookshelf bookshelf games. You you put them up on the the bookshelf, obviously this way. Uh, bookcase game, I should say. And you can see here the the condition of the box externally is uh, is pretty solid. Now, if you've watched my unboxing videos in the past, you'll you'll know that I I do focus on you know on the condition of the the box itself, and this one is actually very very good. Um, now I know that the the pieces it says that it's complete, and you know, but the pieces are unpunched, uh, so that's uh, that's fine. Uh, but it said it was a complete game, so I will check to see that. And so here are target sheets. They come in a booklet. I'll, of course, make photocopies. I'll, I'll dig through the rule book um, a little bit here. And the rule book. I'll, I'll talk about those afterwards. I'll continue doing the unboxing. So here's the campaign grief briefing. Sports Illustrated. So here's a little advertisement. Uh, advertisement from the thing. So it, it seems everything's here. The German Order of Battle. show you this here here's the American order of battle so we have b17s P, uh, p47s some more it shows that the turn and uh, the year the turn, the month, the year, as you're going through. So the orders of battle. Um, here are the remainder of the American planes. So you could see that some of them obviously had popped out, and they put them into the uh, put them in. There's there's obviously more German planes still in the in the original. Since it's already popped out, I'm going to just 
finish popping out the remainder. Um, if they were completely intact, then I would uh, I wouldn't remove them. So here's the here's the resolution table. So you'd you'd roll on this, and it basically says uh, the American aircraft. So it gives you the types, and you would roll your die, and then the German aircraft. So and then you would you would just cross reference and see what the you know what the results are. It's going to take a little bit to remember how to play the game, but uh, that is certainly an original die. And here is the here is the playboard. And so the playboard comes in in three sections, which I'm actually glad that it's like that. Uh, here's the bottom portion of the box and. Once again, fully intact. Let's see the back cover here. Fully intact. So the box is in excellent condition, which I'm usually quite surprised at. So here is the here is the more eastern portion of the board. Um, oh wait. I'm sorry, that's kind of strange. All right, so actually it's the, the more Western because we have Belgium Belgium over here. Um, what threw me off was the fact that the logo is upside down over here, but I guess when you set it on the table, you're sitting on opposing sides, and so that's why that's like that. So I'm going to assume, yes, yeah, this is the the middle portion of the board. Again, in awesome, awesome condition. And then finally, the western portion of the board. And so here you have, you have Hungary and Yugoslavia, Italy, Extending down here. Here's Austria. This will be German Germany up here. Poland up over here. So we uh, we shall put this in here, and then I'll take a look at the the rules and see what we can we can make out as far as that's concerned. So I might have to organize this, uh, this view a little bit better. Um, go to my test desktop view here and we will see what's the best way to present this. So the rules are not like a pamphlet. Um, in essence, it's a it's like this sprawling, a sprawling poster size booklet here. Um, I might actually look to reorganize this and you know make a make a copy of it and then and then put it into a booklet format. Here's pretty cool. It gives you all of the details of the different planes. So here's B-17G. And I'll see if I can bring this down lower for you. Oh, that's pretty low. So, let's see. So B-17G, maximum speed 300 miles per hour at 30,000 feet, cruising speed 160, service ceiling 35,000 feet, maximum range 18, 000, uh, 1,850 miles, armaments 13 50 caliber machine guns, of 
to 17,600 pounds of bombs over short ranges. This rugged veteran was the backbone of the Army Air Corps. He was able to absorb tremendous punishment and could fly on one engine. So, uh, and then we have some of the some of the fighter planes. So here's the P-40N Curtis Warhawk and its service ceiling was 31,000 feet so obviously it could not go as high as the bombers. Carried six uh, 50 caliber Browning machine guns and up to three 500 pound bombs. <coughs> this was a fighter fighter bomber and served in European theater. Ground attack like the P-39, it was outclassed by most of the German equipment. So, an inferior plane uh, to most of the German planes that it was encountering. And then here we have some German planes. We have the, the Junker 88, or JU-88, lower altitude, lower ceiling, 28,000. Shorter range, uh, 4 forward fighting, uh, firing 20 millimeter cannons. All right. Um, and this proved to be one of the most versatile planes in the German arsenal. It served as a bomber, car, cargo plane, reconnaissance, and ground attacker, and night fighter. The ME-109 is, is probably the, the most famous of the service planes um, as far as a uh, you know, single pilot, strictly fighter uh, plane. The ME-109 led a long and useful career in the Luftwaffe service. When its performance was exceeded by Allied aircraft, it was used against the Russians with great effectiveness. So, goes into the basic game and, and how you set up everything. Um, let's come back up here a little bit. And once again, this is the kind of game it's going to take quite a bit to get back into and um, quite a bit of reading now. Now, the, con the, the briefing here does open like a regular book. So I'm kind of curious why they didn't do that with the with the rule book. That would have been nicer. So campaign briefing. So it goes through the bombers and the years which, uh, you know, what were in service at the time. Fighters, same thing. Ground attack, reconnaissance, seaplanes and flying boats, transports. Continuing going on with the different types of planes and, and comparison charts. The identifying markings on the planes. So the Luftwaffe are fighter units available for home defense. And so it lists all of them by by month and year, and then who were available at the time. And then it goes into the U.S. Army Air Force and their units at the time. The bombing accuracy. So order of boxes, the first order is an 82% accuracy. The second is 60, third is 48, fourth is 47, and fifth is 30.
RAF bombers dropped 40% of their bombs within 425 feet of the aiming point and averaged 38% of their tonnage on target, while it appears that the RAF was vastly more accurate than the American Air uh, Force, uh, Army, uh, Army Air Force, blah. It must be remembered that the aiming point for AAF aircraft was usually a single factory building. The aiming point for the RAF would be the entire city. The B-17 with the 15th Air Force accomplished about 77 missions per plane, while those of the 8th Air Force, uh, Air Force averaged only about 58.9 missions. B-24s and their stats and so on. goes into the aircraft, American and German aircraft, Russian air forces, and then the targets, various target zones. So we'll certainly give this a, a good read through and I will probably do a a short gameplay to um, you know to show it off. I certainly this is a much longer game to play than uh, than B seventeen is. I'm I'm fairly certain you could run a, a B seventeen uh, Queen of the Skies combat mission or a bombing mission uh, probably in less than an hour or so. Uh, this here is a you know, is a full length campaign that you're going to run and, and it will probably take the better part of, you know, between three and four hours to actually run through the entire thing. But it, it's been 30 plus years since I've played it, so it's going to take some time. But uh, I'm, I'm really glad to uh, have gotten a hold of this and, and really for so cheaply and in such decent condition, you know, so for Less than twenty dollars. I've recaptured, you know, some of my uh, my early gaming memories from the early nineteen eighties, and I'm really excited about uh, having gotten this. And I look forward to, you know, giving it a run through, and I'll, I'll do another video and and, you know, like I said, show you a little bit of it and, you know, kind of recap my experience with it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's other videos that you'd like for me to take a look at, you know, or other games, I should say, uh, that you'd like for me to take a look at, uh, please feel free to leave a comment in the section. I'm just going to switch back over to the intro here. So um, once again, uh, if you're currently playing it, I've, I've joined the, uh, the Avalon Hills uh, gaming group over on Facebook. So any of you that are watching this video, if you have any, uh, any tips for me, you know, please let me know if there's any, um, if there's any, you know, easily printed PDF versions of the rule books, so I don't have to recreate that myself, you know, please leave a link to that in the comments section. And if any of you are doing any uh, on-screen gaming of this, uh, let me know as well. So, uh, let me see how you're, you're doing this. And, and so perhaps we can get an on, you know, an on-screen uh, on screen playing of this as well. Um, and if you have any hints or tips or, or, you know, easy ways to play this game solo, uh, I certainly look forward to getting those as well. So once again, thanks a lot for joining. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. You know, any questions or comments, you know, please leave them in the comments section. Share the video if you, uh, you know, really enjoyed it. You have other other people that might be interested in jumping in on some of these uh, Avalon Hill games. Avalon Hills games. So I'm talking, you know, fast. It's late. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> you know, once again, thanks for joining. I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. You'll have a great upcoming week. If you're stuck in this uh, bad weather here in the uh, Northeast, I know it, uh, this winter storm has uh, has kind of cut its way across the uh, the Midwest and into the uh, into the eastern section of the country now. Uh, so be safe out there if you are uh, hitting the road tomorrow. 
Uh, I'm expecting to have the day off tomorrow, so I'll probably do another video tomorrow as well. So you all have a great night, and I look forward to seeing you.